Um, it's really uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Professor uh, Rongxin Quinn, um, who is now a full professor uh, in uh, Advanced Materials and Engineering in the Open University uh, UK. Uh, his research uh, um, interests are basically electrification, digitization, and visualization of materials processing. He has led and completed 23 uh, uh, research grants and also a member of editorial boards of at least uh, four international journals. So today, uh, Professor uh, Quinn is going to present us about the inclusions in steel processing. And uh, thank you, Professor uh, uh, Quinn, for accepting our invitation. And floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so today I'm going to introduce some of our uh, work on inclusion processing. Uh, we have, have done some of the work. Uh, so major interest uh, is uh, uh, we can use our uh, knowledge in uh, fluid dynamics and electrical power and thermodynamics combine all, all of the knowledge to um, study uh, steel making. So this is a, a part of the work. Uh, we, I have several people in my group um, contributed to this. Uh, some of them already uh, graduated and uh, left, but a lot of uh, work is still going on. So I will try to give you a, a full story of this uh, topic. So my talk uh, will be will include the following five, five parts. One is the introduction about this uh, uh, project. Uh, next is uh, about theoretical consideration, and then uh, followed by computation and visualization, and then ex experiment and followed by a short conclusion and future works. Uh, as introduced by uh, Prakash, uh, at the moment, I'm interested in electrification, digitalization, and visualization. Uh, those are three things. Uh, electrification is mainly, uh, and uh, in future, I think the people will use more and more of this electricity. Normally, we use a uh, uh, use the heat effect of electricity, just as a heat of uh, the, the materials during material processing. But uh, what we try to do is to understand the, the effect beyond heat effect. The so electricity, electric effect itself, we want to uh, consider that. <laughs> and then digitalization includes many things. Uh, maybe, for example, the <laughs> computation, uh, the modeling, those type of things. And we also are very much introduced in visualization. So uh, in this uh, slide, in this uh, talk, I put together uh, uh, some of uh, the procedures that we did about a visualization of those uh, uh, many, uh, very, very large data. So we developed a software on this. I will have a brief introduction. And then uh, I will introduce the result of this aspect. So introduction. The inclusions in steel making are huge. Uh, so the type of this are really huge. Here uh, listed, let me have a point here. Uh, there's a point. Oh. There's a point. See, the inclusion, we have really, really uh, many different type of inclusion here. Here is a, a 11 different type, but we have lots more inclusions. Those inclusions, uh, a lot of those inclusions, people just wanted them. Uh, they are useful. So we introduced those inclusion in, our, in the steel making. And some of them, we do not really like them, but it's just uh, occurred in steel making. So this inclusion, they have both good effect and uh, bad effect. But uh, anyway, it happens in the material all the time. So what are the effect of those inclusions? Firstly, we want those inclusions because uh, steel making is, uh, is, is at high temperature, over 1,000 degrees to 1,000 to 1,500 degrees in that area. 
So the temperature is very high and the metal are very easy to get oxide. In order to protect the thermosphere, we need oxide to protect the, the oxide and also uh, reduce the heat loss. The best way to protect, uh, to uh, pre prevent oxidation is use oxide. So people use a lot of oxide introduced there to cover or top of the uh, liquid, <coughs> liquid steel and then to protect the surface. And also when we have those uh, uh, oxide on the surface, we need to control the property of those oxide. This including, for example, the viscosity. We need to control the viscosity of those uh, oxide mix mixture at the surface. And also we want to control the melting temperature because a lot of oxide, they are, their melting temperatures are very high. We don't want them to be solidified or we can say we don't want their, them to solidify the temperature below the melting temperature of liquid steel. So in that case, we need to introduce other oxide to react with some of the oxide to get the right viscosity and the right melting temperature. Here is a, a molecular structure of a silicon oxide you see each oxide is linked to four, uh, four uh, no, each silica is linked to uh, four oxide and each, uh, each oxide is linked to two silica. So it uh, is a, got a silica dioxide here. So, so this chain can go very low and make the viscosity very high. So you know, that, to reduce that, we introduce the calcium oxide which will break those trays, break the long chains for short and the viscosity will be improved, that kind of thing. And then another, another thing we need those, those oxide is, oxide is helps nucleation. If we have a, a lot of those oxide particles, very, very fine oxide particle, and then those oxide particles, when they add into steel, they will help nucleation. There's a class of a steel called acicular ferrite. The mainly all the grades are started from the nucleation. So this oxide can actually help the heterogeneous nucleation. But when you put those oxide particles into your products, steel products, and then the steel products, the property will be changed drastically. The stress will be changed which depends on size of oxide. And the ductility is quite complicated. Normally we say if you add some oxide particles and the ductility will be reduced. However, a few years ago, uh, one of my previous colleagues in, in post-tech uh, did the experiment and found if you add some extremely fine uh, inclusions and the ductility can be improved. So he published a paper in size, uh, which is the mechanical property actually improved. But one of the major thing is a cracking. So if you have uh, those, uh, uh, if you have those inclusions, the cracking is got much easier because uh, those inclusions have a different properties um, uh, if you compare that with liquid steel. For example, their formability is different. So if you do a rolling, and that they will not deform in the same rate as the liquid steel to generate a crack. And also the thermal expressivity, uh, co thermal expressive co coefficient is different. So if you get a temperature change and then those inclusions, their the expansion will be not in the same way as the steel, so generate, which generate a crack. So there are so many different uh, effect which include actually effect. So we need to control those uh, inclusions. The source of inclusion, as I said, a lot of them are added. We just uh, choose added. And then uh, some of them are actually formed during steel making from oxidation. And then a lot of them are actually due to the rea chemical reaction in eye making and steel making, which form those, uh, uh, those inclusions. 
So how to represent inclusions? Many people just uh, uh, use a number of inclusion or we say a fraction of the inclusions. And also the size of the inclusion is most important. So we don't want the inclusion to be very large. So we need some more inclusions. A lot of uh, different studios, such as a um, such as a barren studio, you need to get rid get rid of the inclusions. So the inclusion should be removed. So that is a, a case for our research. So in processing method, the how to remove those inclusions if you do not want those inclusions in your studio. And then how to remove. So if you want to remove that, the first is you need to test the difference between inclusion and liquid steel. So according to their property difference, and then you we remove remove those inclusion. So the uh, first thing is their density is different. For example, aluminum oxide, the density is uh, very low compared with the liquid steel. So we can just use a buoyancy of force. So those we wait for a while and those inclusion will lift to the surface and then we remove that mechanically. And the size are different. In that case, so we can actually let those liquid steel to flow <laughs> through a porous ceramic part and use a filtration and then the inclusion will be filled. And then we also can use a magnetic stirring to let it flow so that the particle will be flowing into the surface, like um, skin or a water surface. Okay. So if you have a speed uh, and then you flow to the surface, larger particle will flow to the surface. And also according to the, diff the capillary and you can use a bubbling, there's a lot of other methods. So what we want to use is that we want to separate those uh, inclusion from liquid steel by using the electric conductivity difference. So the, the, when the electric conductivity is different, so we can actually separate them. So that's a, a very, very different way of uh, inclusion removing technology, which we like to do. So that was an introduction. So why we want to do and uh, uh, what is that? So now let's uh, consider whether this is uh, possible to control the inclusion in the in steel making uh, using electric method. So let's consider theory. Suppose this is a liquid steel. It is its electrical conductivity is this, and then inside there there is an inclusion here. So the difference between steel and the inclusion in our eye is that the inclusion have a different electrical conductivity. So electrical property is different. However. This inclusion is electrically neutral. What we say the electric neutral is uh, no net charge there. Okay, all the uh, the charge all the charge carried by electrons are balanced by the other charge carried by neutral uh, uh, proton. So in that case, it's, a, it's a electrically neutral, and we know in liquid steel is also electrically neutral. And also we suppose there's no polarize if we have an electric field added on there. So in that case, we don't have any force according to the, our normal consideration. In that case, if you have an electric field, then the, this inclusion will not feel the, not feel the electric field. So uh, in many papers, you may find many papers of publishing the material and intellectual transaction. People quite a lot of paper claim there is a Lorentz force there. So what is a Lorentz force? Lorentz force is a such a force. So if you have a, a, a particle carry an amount of a charge Q, put that into an electric field, and then it will, it will feel a force. The force will be the Q multiplied the electric field E. And then if there's a magnetic field, and then the force will be the velocity of this particle, particle moving velocity, cross this magnetic field, magnetic field B. Okay, so added together, this is a Lorentz force. 
However, if you have an electron neutral one, that means a Q equal to zero, and there you don't, you, you have a zero Lorentz force. Uh, another case that people try to do this, uh, if you multi put this uh, Q into the bracket, and then Q multiplies this uh, V, this, uh, this uh, charge multiplies the moving velocity, is actually the current density, uh, current density here. So Lorentz force is right to here. So many people in this case, they calculated a Lorentz force because I was, they said, oh, okay, in your materials, you pass the electric current J, and then the particle will have this one. So that's, that's not right, because although you put electric current into the liquid still, but if this one is not conductive at all, the so inside of this particle will have zero electric current. The current will be distributed to the other part, not the inside. So if we do not have the Lorentz force, and then can electric field affect the particle? The answer is yes. So why? So where's that? So in 1953, there's a very famous professor calling here in America. He published a paper in science. He used a mathematical calculation, just to use a, uh, use a, a energy calculate instead of any very fundamental, uh, instead of any fundamental investigate. He found if you have a, a material which elect with different electric conductivity than the uh, matrix, and then they will be uh, energy different. And that energy different will actually generate a force. So he published a paper in science and then applied a patent on it. And then he developed that technology since then, that technology has to be always used in clinic to separate blood cell uh, in clinic. So it's always used, used for many, many years. In that case, what he need is you need the electric current passing through the, the material like liquid blood. And then you need, uh, in particular to this, this surface, you need a magnetic field particular to this material like um, um, yeah, perpendicular to this screen, and you need a magnetic field. So now you have a one electric field at the you know, 90 degree perpendicular that you got a magnetic field, and that generate a force. Force will drag this particle to move out of this liquid. That is called electromagnetic forces. Okay, so in our case, we do not apply magnetic field. So can we derive from a very, very fundamental case and see whether this electric field can actually generate that energy difference? What we did is like this. So inside the liquid metal, and you have a lot of free electrons, okay? Electric neutral means no net, no net charge, but inside you have a lot of electrons. So if you apply electric field, then the drifting behavior of these electrons will be changed. Okay. So so the work the work the electric field do to the to this electron will be like this. The work it do will be equals to the force electric force multiply along the electric force direction the displacement it made, okay? The force, if you have electric field equal to this, okay? This uh, electric field and multiply this, uh, uh, this uh, charge. And then the drift velocity equals to drift speed multiply the time difference, delta t. So in that case, we have this. And then if we reorganize, let this rho and this v Drift velocity go together. This is actually a current density J. So we have a E, those two become a J, and we have delta T. So if you put a Maxwell equation into the substitute Maxwell equation here, the J equals to nabla cross H. H is a magnetic field stress. Okay, is this equal to this? 
So this is a Maxwell equation. You can get this. And then if this is just a small part, if you, we integrate the whole space, whole volume of this, we get a total amount of work it done equal to this uh, integration of this term to the whole space. So now we use a partial integration equation and we got the delta t here and then first the part become partial integration. The first is this and you know if we have, have this the integra integration will actually go to the surface of this. That term must be zero. And the next term is this. Okay, We have a delta t here but we have this, we have this term here, use the Maxwell equation, this one equals to this. So you see we have delta t here and we have a delta t here. So those delta t is gone. In that case, we have a total work is just is an edge and it's a delta b. Okay, you integrate through the space. So what's a delta b? It's a change of a b. So in my electromagnetic system, if you have a magnetic, you do the work. So the work will be separated into two parts. One, one part will be actually used to change the free energy. Another part is used to against. So when you want to change the electromagnetic field, the electromagnetic field will against you to change it. Then you will have that. So you have a part of half of exactly half of that half of the energy used to change energy. Another half is to fight against those resistors. Okay, so then you have a half factor here. So that is a half here. So it's H. This is the B. Okay. So if you play around this parameter, and then you will get another same format. Uh, this and, and this are, are identical. And then A is a vector. A is a vector. So where you have this current density, this A can be obtained from this. And this is a static solution is this, this current density. So if you substitute A from here to here, so you have an electric, uh, uh, the free energy will actually go to, to become this part. So we can use, if in your calculation, you can use either this part or use this, you use this part. Those are identical. If you use this part, H and B, if you have a current, so the, the magnetic field will go from your laboratory, from your sample to the universe, okay? Or, or, or always if the distance is become far, at that it is reducing but it's reduced very, very slowly. So the integration will need to go to very, very far away. But if you use the electric current one, the current will not leak out of your sample. So you only need to integrate this throughout your sample because out of the side of the sample, current cannot go away. So this is a method we use. If you are introducing the more detailed how this edge, this will become this. You can read my paper, uh, which contains a lot more details on how to derive each equation, which I published before a few years ago. But then we have this term. So where is this term? So this is our derivation for this term. So where is this term comes from in, in literature? Then we found in literature, Landau actually had a theory in many, many centuries ago. He found if you have an electromagnetic field, the total free energy should be should contain many for many many terms. The top five ter terms are those listed here. They are more smaller ones. Now the first term is about electric field. Okay, this one is suitable for if you want to calculate the ceramic particle sintering, you need to use the first term. The second term is second term is here. If you compare this with the other term, you see this mu zero mu h hr, hr equals to b. So it which is a b dot h, which is exactly this one, and half factor is here. So what our derivation is 
is it agree with Landau's original approximation. It's, it, it, it's this. So for the metallic material carry electric current, the free energy system. So what are the three? Those other three are very hot topic in the last 15 years, which is use the electric field to change magnetic property uh, or use the magnetic field to change electrical property. You have found hundreds of papers in natural size just use that because it's a hot topic in making functional materials. Okay, so we got a theory, so we needed to do a computation and we, we, we use a visualization to analyze what happens. So that we have that integration. So if we put a discrete space into many, many different point, discrete point, and we can actually calculate the current distribution in the space. And in different area, you get a different phase, and that got a different electric conductivity. You can calculate the electric current, and according to electric current distribution, you calculate the system free energy, and you can ca ca calculate free energy change. Okay, here I said it's alpha or gamma or whatever. You might say, okay, alpha is an inclusion, gamma is a liquid, or whatever. It's a, uh, applicable to any kind of a situation. So here is a one of a calculation I did. So if you, we have an inclusion here, we have a, a liquid still here, and then we apply electrical potential difference between two atoms. So you see the vertical line are uh, uh, potential. So the high is a this red is a high and the blue is low. So it's a 20 volts difference. So also vertical. The horizontal lines are uh, actually the, the flow stream, electric current flow stream. You see around this, this part uh, inclusions, the flow stream became different. So if you look at here, this is a, a electric current density. So around these uh, particles inside there, current electric current density is much lower because this one got lower electric conductivity, but not zero. If it's a absolutely uh, not conductive and the inside will not have any current. So you can have a, can get a different current distribution and from there we can calculate the, the, the free energy different. So here are three different cases. If we have an inclusion, in first case located at a center, next time you locate it at another point moving toward the boundary, and then next time you actually close to the surface. So in three different cases, we can get a current distribution. This is a contour of the electric current, okay? Uh, and then you see that the electric current distribution are completely different. So if we substitute this current distribution into our equation, which we just derived, we will be able to know at different cases, the electric uh, current free energy will be different. Okay, so if we have a, when we move those particles from one point A to another point B, for example, this point is A and that point is B, if you move the current to a different position, I suppose those two are in a very small distance. And that free energy difference, suppose, is, uh, is this, and that distance moves here. So we can actually represent this as a force. This is a force we never see, but uh, we, according to here, this equation is right, right? But can we use that, use this equation, can we to represent the free energy? We are not sure. So for this one, when I derive this equation, I uh, keep to ask people, do you feel this, this approximation is right? So I ask many, many people, uh, nobody sure. Unless, uh, uh, and finally, I asked the one uh, physics professor who is a fellow of Royal Society. He said, obviously that's right. So you, you just published that, it's absolutely right. This one can be named as a configuration force. So, we use that, uh, but, okay, this is, should be right. So it's the free energy, gives the energy difference uh, divided by the, the distance between the two positions. 
um, and then we can generate the force, force, the equivalent force. And then according to force, we can calculate uh, uh, acceleration. So in that case, if we calculate the inclusion difference in different point, and then if we get the uh, get the free energy, and then we can calculate the force. So this is a free energy. So when the, the inclusion are changed from center to the surface, we see the, the the free energy, electric current free energy is reducing consistently, reduce a lot, until here is a very, very close to the surface. Okay, here is a surface, very close to surface, and then it starts to pick up a bit. And then after that, once they approach the surface, uh, once it get to office instantly, and then the electric current try to push the enclosure away, so they fall, the the free energy reduces drastically. So mainly, it's this part is the most important. You see, different uh, point actually represent the different uh, car different electric conductivity uh, conductivity ratio. Okay, so. This one is a uh, ratio is 0 0.7, which means the inclusions, electric, electric conductivity of the inclusion is about 70% of a liquid steel. This one is a lot smaller. This cross is about 1% of the uh, electric conductivity of a liquid steel. You see, it's this. When we have the free energy, we can calculate the force. But when we calculate force, we don't know how big is the force. Okay? So, the best way is we use acceleration instead of a force. So what we did is when we calculate into an acceleration, we found it's astonishingly large. So this acceleration to inclusion is a meter per, per second square. And then if you look at this, it's a 50 meter per second square. We can very easily to achieve using 20 volts of electric potential can very easy to achieve over 50. We know the gravitational force acceleration is only 9.8. So 50 is a five time of gravi gravitation. So it's, a, it's really, really big uh, force can be generated by electric field. And then that one is a try to push the inclusion away from the liquid steel. Okay. And then after that, uh, we did the experiment, which I'll tell you later to prove that's right. And then another student came to calculate if you have not just one, one inclusion, instead, if you have two inclusion arranging this way. So current will flow from left to right this way, but the two inclusion this way. So will this current actually push those, put, push away those two uh, uh, inclusion or just try to put them together. So how electric field will affect the agglomeration or separation. In this case, those two inclusions are parallel to the electric current field. So what he, he found is, so for the first case, then if those are two, two inclusions, if the, their distance is, a, if the distance is a increase, that means they are separating, then the free energy is dropping. Free, this is the electric current of free energy, okay? Not the chemical uh, free energy. So it's a dropping. That means electric current will try to separate those inclusions and prevent them from agglomerate. However, if they are in horizontal way, if they're in horizontal way, if they are, they are very close, and then you see when they separate, the free energy increase. That means the free energy will try to put them together rather than separate them. But after critical distance and then electric current will try to separate those, those, uh, uh, those inclusions. We, uh, in another sentence, we, we can say electric current trying to prevent them from, uh, from agglomeration if the critical distance is that way. So if we summarize, we can say, if we have electric current uh, move from left to right, here are a lot of the inclusion. It is poss it's possible. So at this, the, this is a vertical direction. They will try to separate. But there's a horizontal direction. They might, if they, they are close enough, 
they may try to attach to each other, form this like a thread-wise inclusion, okay? And also, is we say, according to calculation, if we have those inclusion in this way, and then pass the electric current, they will try to align, attached to change the, this one. However, if those inclusions are in this shape, ellipsoid shape, but in particular to the electric current, they will be fractured to form very diff, very small uh, part. So th those are according to calculation. And then uh, a student did another case. So if we have an inclusion, that inclusion try to grow. In that case, what kind of morphology this electric current will affect? So from one to seven, is a different morphology of the inclusion. And that free energy corresponding to a different way. That means if you have a current from left to right, and this inclusion will grow in a pattern which is a parallel to electric field, okay? This is another case. If I got the same volume, but uh, it's, it's in different shape, so which will be preferred? They find this shape will be more preferred than this one. So get a, a free energy. Uh, so this is a, another case to uh, predict. Uh, in that case, so we actually calculate can electric current be able to use to align the, the inclusion, align the phases. Suppose we put those graphite uh, flake into a salt water. So the graphite flake will be, or, uh, will be uh, this, uh, the direction will be uh, you know, varies away like this. So if we apply electric current, can we, they actually align to this? We find yes, it can. And we, it will generate a very, very big torch force to change, to align those flakes into a certain way. So which it can be used to uh, make more functional uh, materials. So the visualization is uh, quite important because uh, we don't know if they have an inclusion there, what's the temperature difference will be? People try to answer this question. So, okay, if I have an inclusion, is the inside the inclusion, the temperature is higher or lower than in the matrix. So this calculation and the visualization can actually tell you. So if the, if the inclusion is a, par is a parallel to the electric field here, and then inside the inclusion, the inclusion, the temperature inside the inclusion is lower than in matrix because there's no or very small electric current passing through that. However, if you rotate this and then you see gradually inside of the inclusion, the temperature will be increased. If it's a particular inside, the temperature will be much, much higher. So, so this we we really can tell you so how the inclusion the temperature inside the inclusion will be changed. So visualization is important, and also we calculate if we, if the inclusions are in a fiber or needle like like a carbon nanotube or whatever. If you put that into a conductive liquid like a salt water, salted water. And also free energy different. This is a randomly distributed fiber, and we calculate in the system for the free energy is this. And then if we the, after they are aligned, the free energy is reduced into this. So this electric field can help to align the fibers or needle-like uh, morphologies. So that's a, another uh, top of, uh, sort of a calculation. And then very recently, we see. Uh, we have with the two shoe uh, and uh, several other uh, several other company. We have a EU project. What we find is that if Kevin use the electric field to change the uh, surface roughness of the of the uh, both the flux, so then we generate the different surface roughness, and then we pass the electric current into it. And to see how the free energy will be changed if the material different different surface surface geometry. 
So if we find a certain, if we find a certain surface roughness that then uh, is their free energy is higher than others. That means the free energy can be no, the surface roughness can be changed, changed by the electric field. So we calculated it about according to our theory. We found the electric current can change the surface roughness, mainly make the surface more smooth. So you're still making if you have the have the uh, the model flux, uh, which model flux, which is a lot more smooth, and then uh, the steel pro pro surface property will be uh, better. Uh, will be better. So we published a theory, uh, experimental, uh, now in other consideration. I will show you the electrical result. I said we are doing, we did the visualization. So here is a, a software we actually developed to you. Uh, which helped a lot of the students. So how to plot the result? Okay, just uh, about uh, one or two minutes. I show you this is this is software we developed. So just to show. Uh, we also are very much uh, interested in visualization thing. So this is a, a dual phase stainless steel. Uh, the project was funded by EDF in France. So what we like to say is that if we have electric current passing through this dual phase steel, so how the spinodal decomposition will be affected by, by this electric current treatment. So in this case, we did all the calculation, but it's a visualization really, tell, really uh, told us uh, what happens in different gray and how the current was distributed, how the temperature was affected, and how the uh, electric current the flow the inside the different part. So this, uh, this software can actually plot all sorts of different uh, um, method. We tried a phase field, lattice Boltzmann, DPD, which means a dissipative particle dynamics, smooth particle hydrodynamics, and a non structure uh, simulation like a CFD. And uh, if you want to do residual stress, whatever, or even mathematics, all three dimensions we can do. So. And if you, according to your calculation, if you have thousands of data, so here is, is an animation, we will allow you to automatically plot all of your data in theory and then uh, saved as a, a video. Say this is uh, just also not here. We uh, take away the ferrite. Yeah. So we got a uh, uh, many many different functionality. Uh, we are keep develop. Especially we have those uh, multi domain visualization. So if your data is extremely large, came from national supercomputers, and then you won't be able to demonstrate all your data. So you can actually choose which domain. You can here you got a selected domain. So you have a different domain. And then you can see to maximize maximize the view view uh, field which you wanted according to the computer. Okay, uh, I showed you our modeling uh, uh, computation and visualization. Now it's experiment. Here is a experimental facility uh, in my laboratory. It's very simple, uh, and here is electrical power which convert the uh, wall power to uh, direct current uh, with a voltage only 24 volts. So students are safe to use it because the voltage is so low. Uh, industry recommended the safe voltage is 30, 32, I think. So 34, you can, you can use your hand to hand it without any problem. So from this power, you go to this machine, which will convert this current into the pulse. 
So all the frequency, pulse duration, output current density, everything can be uh, everything can be adjusted accurately. And then if you have some experiments which you you did, and then you can save the save the parameter next time you can reload the, the current uh, current and do. So here is a, a experimental work about the inclusion removing. So. So here, so we did the electron passing treatment and then I use optical microscope to count all the, to count all the electric, uh, uh, no, cut all the inclusion distribution. Here, this, this is a one sample without current. We found the inclusions from bottom to, to top of the sample, so almost the same, a reasonable fluctuation, but almost uh, homogeneous. However, after electro pulse, we found at the central part, the number of inclusion are close to zero, very small, but those inclusions are all put into area close to surface. That actually makes the situation even worse, you know, if you have a lot of inclusion, but all in the surface, that materials is really bad. So we add a layer of slag or top of the steel layer, and then all the inclusions actually get into the slag. So in liquid, in the liquid, in, in the metal, in solid feather metals, so the inclusions are extremely low. So here is a, a SEM image. We did this SEM image and we use that visualization software plotted because without this one, you can't see. The reason is the scale, metric is scale is in centimeter. Uh, uh, but a, those particles, each particle is only a few micrometers. So you won't be able to see. So if you plot that using the SEM machine, it's just a point you can't see. So we can use a two scale here, and the, then we found. So that it shows this is a without electro pulse treatment. So inclusion, all the magnum self inclusion are distributed almost uniformly across the space. However, if we have electro pulse, and then after after treatment at this central part, inclusions almost disappear, and all the inclusion at the surface part have got a lot more. However, they will still have some inclusions here. But if you look at the pattern, those those inclusions distributions are in, a, in seems in a certain pattern, which like a dendrite. So it's actually this magnum self inclusion actually was a formed. This part was a formed during solidification of the steel. So you see, you can see actually they are in the interface. If we see the aluminum oxide, this is a, a without electron passing. You see that they are distributed homogeneously in space, and then after electron passing, we cannot see any. And they might be, but uh, this SEM machine was uh, 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 so it can only uh, get the data if the inclusions are more large than seven micrometer or zero point seven micrometer, and then uh, larger than that you can see. So more than that we can't see. So here we can't see. That means at this area inclusion must be less than zero point seven micrometer. Uh, this is this inclusion. So you see, this is uh, without current pulse, with current pulse is here. It's here. So central part is very clear. And then, uh, so Tata Studio funded a material processing institute to carry out uh, the, the very traceable uh, experiment. Uh, and uh, the, the conclusion was they did after about two years of uh, search. Uh, two years of research they did was uh, within 15 minutes, 95% of the inclusions are all gone from the liquid steel to slag. Uh, in their case, they controlled accurately. They use uh, um, cesium oxide uh, because you still do not have any cesium oxide, cesium element here. So 
they put, they embed the sesame oxide into the steel, and then after that, they analyze the trace where are sesame gone. So they can't find any sesame in steel. All sesame will actually go to the move to slab. So we said the electric current will actually uh, elongate the inclusions along the electron field. This is without electric. This is uh, with electric field. You see, so original spherical one, we actually, you can see this a very long one. So it, this actually changed the orientation of those inclusions. Here, this is a one part of result we did, but we have not, the paper is under, under review, we submitted. So this is a, a slag we, where we slag without electropassing. So we did the solidification and then we have a 3D surface profile profiler and see the surface. So this is an experiment match result about the surface without electro pulse. This R value is a 21.18 micrometer. And then when, then when we use the electric current, the surface became this, the picture became this. This R value according to measurement is reduced to 7.9. This one is, is now uh, under review. So that is a story uh, about our case. So in conclusion, uh, we found electric current can be used to separate material with a different electric conductivity. Uh, and some dynamic calculation provide a reasonable, reasonable guide to the inclusion processing in steel uh, making. What we found uh, say some dynamics the mean, mean, mainly mean, it means electric current uh, free energy calculation. So the future work, so we need to a lot more work also go up thing because when fluid flow coming in and uh, we need to com compete with the electric current. And a more fundamental mechanism I would very much like to recommend this paper is just a published by Professor Adrian Sutton. So he, he, about uh, how to use the electric current to to, to achieve the best result. So he actually, Professor Sutton was a person who told me you can use that equation without a problem. So he's a FIS, uh, Todorov was his student. And then we also are doing this uh, database with, so this is a very recent paper we published about the electrical property database uh, uh, using neural work to do. So, um, I acknowledge that we got uh, support from a lot of different places and uh, uh, contributed from uh, many students and also students at postdoc and also uh, colleagues and friends uh, from uh, various places. Thank you very much. I think I talked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right on time, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, and uh, first of all, thank you very much for a wonderful talk. Thank and you. Uh, good to see that various uh, changes in inclusion morphologies because of electric pulses effect. Mm -hmm. um, the floor is now open for questions. So um, your conclusion, uh, Rungsha, uh, that mm. is uh, basically the, uh, based on the electric conductivity difference. Yeah. Uh, um, so, what difference, say, how, how big the difference between these two materials you think it is going to work? Uh, according to our calculation, so yeah. uh, if uh, if we have a one time, one time ratio, for example, if the inclusion is a 10% uh, of the, uh, the, the electrical conductivity of the inclusion is a 10% of the, uh, electric conductivity of the liquid steel. And then the force is already very, very big. I can achieve almost a five times of gravity. Uh, uh, you can see the effect that even it got 70% of the 70% uh, of the value. Ratio is 0 0.7 can still work work well. But uh, 0.1 can work ex extremely well. Larger than that, it actually do not make much difference. It's so, so you say, you say one of them is ten percent. It's good. Uh, if like a yeah. hundred, a uh, uh, hundred one percent will, will be better. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, mm. the second question is, 
these two materials you are talking about the inclusions uh, probably inclusion is a solid if these mm. two materials are the same state for example they are both solid or both are liquid it's going to mm. work or not oh in solid you don't have that force so if, uh, uh, a liquid uh, if both are liquid uh, yeah uh, so matrix must be liquid in order to uh, your in order to let your uh, inclusion to move, right? But the inclusion can be liquid droplet or can be bubbles. So that is a case when people uh, try to uh, put, use the electric current to push away bubbles, tiny yeah. bubble, hydrogen yeah. bubble or whatever tiny bubble. So if you apply that, those uh, very tiny tiny bubble will be pushed away. So it doesn't matter. So if these two are liquid, that has to be like a immiscible or, or, or two phases. If if these two uh, yeah, mix the well, you can't really separate the here. No, uh, if it mix the well, you can't see uh, the difference. But it mix the well, that's a fall into another regime, which is a how to help it, it how, how to chase the nuclear rate at the growth rate. So if they are miscible, and then, then you can't separate, but if they are uh, immiscible in some cases, yeah. and then so electric current can actually change the separation rate. So that was uh, one of the major things for the uh, EDF who supported the project, how to, uh, how to use the electric current to change the spinodal decomposition. Good, good, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your wonderful yeah. talk. Really, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Oh, yes, I have one. Um, you showed actually that uh, inclusions are pushed from the from the center yeah. towards the edge. Um, I am a bit confused because we have a slack only at one edge, so only at the top of the melt. Mm. How would we deal with the other end? So in that case, I believe it would be at the bottom of the vessel, which uh, this <laughs> would be used. Uh, yeah, that's right. The thing is, uh, uh, is this: when when you cast uh, when you cast the material, cast uh, materials, and then the both side, not only the top but also the walls, right? You can push those uh, those uh, uh, oxide uh, through through the lateral walls. In that case, the electrode should be arranged in a different way. So you just arrange the position of the electrode, and then you can control the control uh, the uh, enclosure movement speed. That's one thing. Another thing is even in, in, for the top one, and then you change the in depth of the uh, electrode. So you will be able to push the push the inclusion to move toward the direction which you like. Right. So you do not need to be from a top to bottom. You got an electrode in that high, but if you change the position of the electrode, you can always achieve uh, the desirable. Oh, great. Thanks. Maybe yeah. the other one, uh, we, in which actually process you believe that this will be uh, yeah, implemented or, yeah. Um, what what we, re what we really uh, propose was in, in Turkish, uh, where we got a lot of inclusion. So in, in Turkish, we put electrodes there in Turkish. And that uh, inclusion will mainly be removed in that stage. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because in mode solidification, that's a lot more complicated. You have solid liquid interface, a lot of other things to control. And also uh, during solidification, so this electrode pulse will act actually have a very strong influence <coughs> on the nucleus and the growth. So in that case, so you need probably other effect will overtake this. Thank you very much. Yeah. On wheel. Hi, Ronsan. Probably just following on what has been discussed with, between you and Zhu Su, uh, look into uh, the electricity conduct uh, difference or, or, or conductivity mm. difference. You mentioned 10% mm. would be something ideal for to separate them. Uh, I, uh, I, I, smaller, uh, what I said, uh, the, the, the bigger difference is better. 
Okay. Uh, what we say the ten percent is already a uh, deal, but if you mm -hmm. uh, if it's like a or something, it's even better. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, yeah, ten percent is will be very obvious. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. checked through, just through on, on the internet. I found this mm -hmm. solid iron and liquid iron at the melting point. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is about nine percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So would be. Uh, this would be a way to use electricity uh, 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 to to separate or to move the solid liquid uh, solidified. Well, I was talking about during solidification when liquid mm. becomes solid and mm. it increase increase uh, this conductivity yeah. and resist. Yeah, about nine percent different between liquid and solid. Can mm. could this have a, have have effect uh, 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 on this uh, movement or? of the solid phase. Yeah, it, it will be. All, uh, yeah, uh, all the matter actually, not only this deal, all the matter is uh, the liquid state and solid state in the melting point is just about 10% difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that case, uh, it will still have this effect. Um, still has the effect. According to our calculation, we got a 70% difference, you got a big one. So at the 90, if you get a 90 percent of the, 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 we still have a difference. So in, in that case, if you want to move inclusion, it will take a longer time because the force is smaller, but it will have effect. However, in that solidification case, the electron pulse affect the nucleation rate. That is a huge effect, although, although the difference is 10 percent, but the nucleation, you don't need a, a big, big energy to to mm -hmm. change the uh, nucleation barrier. So yeah, I, I, I had a paper pre before a long time ago as a calculator, what kind of current density uh, will be able to uh, produce uh, nanostructure steel during using, using normal solidification. So the current density is one difference, the change of direction, but if you want to increase the effect, you can always increase the current density because the effect is a proportional to current density square. Mm -hmm. So that one, you, 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 you reduce, the, for example, you reduce the, the uh, factor of 10, but if you improve current density by a factor of 10, and the square is a hundred, uh, it's a factor of a hundred, so. Mm -hmm you can get it right. Yeah, and now also probably another, another question we can, we can discuss whether this is a real nucleation or grow from small nuclei. I, yeah, both. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. yeah both. Um, and so I recently published a paper um, uh, about, uh, it's a paper is about e electric effect or the uh, electric arc welding. So uh, I, I, I discuss this a problem. Uh, mm. Discuss this a problem because the electric conductivity uh, of metals in nanoscale is quite complicated. Uh, people have that result. It's like a parabolic one. <laughs> so initially, when the crystal grows, it's a current density actually the current the resistivity actually increase, but. Uh, past a few nanoseconds, it decreased. So large grades always have a smaller electrical resistance, resistance mm. that is small. So in that case, it's how to control the current pulse. In nucleation stage, yes, it increases, but it also increases the growth rate drastically. So in that case, make sure current is active on the nucleation stage, mm. not in growth stage. Mm. Yeah, yeah, this probably is something we can further quantify the, those those events. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. One we can talk to <laughs> talk to you later. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, Rangshan, one quick question: Would it be possible to like uh, visualize these things like in situ? Um, uh, like you know, uh, using either synchrotron or something, apply your electric pulses and see um, whether these inclusions push it away, how far they push it away, um, something like that. I'm just thinking. Uh, I think in liquid state we can, 
uh, if you put a, a liquid, but not not a steel, you, you know, a steel got a very high temperature, it's not transparent, you can't handle that situation. But if we say, if we put some inclusion in a conducting liquid, salted water, right? Put oh, it okay. into optical microscope and add a, a, a tiny particles there and apply electric current, you can take the, uh, uh, take the, the picture or take the movie. Uh, and just see the difference. Yeah. And also in real uh, steel, uh, for example, processing, um, when you apply these pulses, you see these mm. inclusions moving away. But mm. you know, once you stop this uh, pulsing, is there any chance that they can come back like a fading effect we observe in other types of alloys? Yeah, if they are still inside the liquid, they, of of course, uh, the, yeah. the the convection will actually drive them to move move around. So in any case, we really need to optimize uh, the the electrical current uh, processing parameter to achieve the uh, result which we want. Otherwise, you just uh, push them away from one place yeah. to another, yeah. uh, make it heterogeneous. So that will actually be more harmful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of, lot of things to uh, understand. Yeah. 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 Very, um, Professor Manna is there from India. I hope you know him very well. Uh, Professor Manna. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Manna, you have any questions? Yeah, just, okay. <laughs> I just want to know, in case of solid state, if yeah. you put this pulsing with the inclusion, can the inclusion shape or size can be made, modified? Oh, uh, we <laughs> we did the experiment. We found those are porous uh, inside the, the the solid steel, or actually be um, be modified. Uh, but we didn't actually see the inclusions be modified. But uh, the thing is, what we saw is that in some of the materials, we can easily to change the cementite. Okay. The orientation of the carbon, because carbon moves very, very quickly in liquid steel. In that case, uh, a student that did the experiment, uh, which he found very far. So he put the electro pulse uh, or the Ooh. low carbon uh, automotive steel. So pulse about 3,000 times. 3,000 times is very short. You know, each pulse is only 20 microsecond. So, so less than 15 minutes, and then he see. Uh, use the SEM to see the mark structure. He can see the oriented mark structure, which mainly is a cement uh, perlite, smooth perlite structure over there. So what he did was after that, after taking a picture, he rotated that sample to of to a 90 degree uh, for another 15 minutes. And then that orientation changed completely to an, another uh, to a 90 degree. Okay. Yes, we see, but I think it's a very much depend on which inclusion. If you have a silicon oxide, then I, I don't think it, it will have any modification. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, any if uh, any further questions? Any anyone? Um, if no more questions. Uh, I would like to once again uh, thank you, Professor Kim, for this uh, wonderful talk and your uh, time. Um, thank you so much. And uh, thank you. Um,